When we moved to France three years ago, uh, we had cost of education, university education, and cost of health care in mind, and uh, various other quality of life considerations. But we kind of we actually expected um, other things to be more expensive. So we were pleasantly surprised. Let's put it that way. Uh, before moving here, we had used a website, or I had used a website called Numbio, and I'd kind of forgotten about it and recently rediscovered it. And, uh, and yeah, without further ado, let's compare some of the cost of living items uh, between the U.S. and France. All right, here we are at the Numbio website. I'm going to start with the comparison of where I used to live with where I live now. In other words, San Diego, California is where I used to live and Grenoble, France is where I live now. As you can see, uh, cost of living in various categories um, is significantly lower in Grenoble, um, particularly so in rent prices um, with the high cost of housing in California. Uh, but offsetting that is, the, is a uh, net greater purchasing power in San Diego due to higher average salaries. Um, that's great if you're in that one of those salary categories. Um, but for expats who are either on a limited income that they're drawing from the U.S. or uh, they're digital nomads still working in the U.S., um, that last uh, salary concern shouldn't, uh, shouldn't affect them. Now, this next, next category should make people happy who like to go out, <laughs> and it's restaurants. Um, once again, you can see on the right column that the costs are much less in Grenoble, generally. Um, going down to the second row, uh, meal for two people, mid-range restaurant. Uh, yesterday, my wife and I went out to lunch at, uh, I wouldn't call it a mid-range, I'd call it at a, at a, you know, posh restaurant. And we had lunch. Um, we, I'm not sure what they mean a three-course meal, whether they mean appetizers, a main course, and dessert. Um, but we, we just had the main course. And we had, uh, each of us, my wife had a glass of wine, I had a pint of beer, um, and uh, and uh, very nice uh, main course, and then followed up with uh, my wife had a cappuccino, and I had um, a double espresso at the end of the meal, and the total bill was fifty five euros, and uh, and then on top of that, there's no tip, so um, there's you know sometimes you'll see a little tip jar out and people will give um, small change but uh, oftentimes there's just not even an opportunity really to tip so um, um, yeah so that of course is a 20% savings right there off the bat all right on this uh, next category I think that's uh, near and dear to most of our hearts uh, perhaps more important than restaurant prices um, at least for families uh, markets and, and basically shopping for groceries and you can see once again um, Grenoble comes in overall less expensive although this is just half the page we'll get to the next page shortly a couple of interesting things in here um, first of all uh, um, bread much cheaper here every and much much better I might add so you know uh, a lot of the French uh, stereotypes hold true, and um, you know about Boulang buying bread at boulangeries and buying bread fresh, and then so you know bread is a big part of the French culture. Um, and then uh, skipping down to an interesting one, cheese. It's a very very cheese and dairy oriented country, at, le at least around Grenoble, which is uh, nestled in the Alps and uh, with many many exotic cheeses so uh, I'm not sure that this is an 
<clears throat> apples to apples comparison because it's I, I, I suspect what's being compared here is some very, you know, esoteric and high grade French cheeses uh, compared to, you know, the sort of much more standard American cheeses um, like, you know, the, the ones that you'll find in America, like Swiss and cheddar and and things like that. Jack cheese. In fact, uh, it was very confusing for us when we first moved to France that just how many <laughs> cheeses there were. Um, anyway, let's moving on to the uh, next slide. All right, uh, moving on to the uh, same category, groceries. You can see the trend continues. Uh, a couple of interesting things here. Um, wine is much, much less expensive and much better quality for what you get, what you pay for here in France. Uh, coming from California, growing up... Uh, Hearing about how wonderful California wines were and how they competed with the best in the world, I was quite frankly very surprised at how much more you got for your money here in France. Um, let me see now, looking down a bit, um, domestic beer, I, I guess that's true if you buy it as a grocery, but in, if you buy it in restaurants, it, it's quite a bit less expensive here. Um, Cigarettes, uh, this is kind of an interesting one that it's, it's more expensive in Grenoble than it is in, in the U.S. or in San Diego. And uh, France, as you probably know, is uh, there's a lot more people that smoke here. It's, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just a, a lot more accepted part of the society. I think it is on the way out. The, the cigarette packages themselves have the most gruesome pictures on them to try to dissuade people from smoking yet there's still quite a few smokers here and uh and a lot of underage smokers too so um and they're paying more for it out of a smaller salary so it's uh it's that that one's a bit surprising uh, the next section is transportation i don't think we have to spend a lot of time on this but generally speaking you can see that public transit is less expensive and as well as uh, taxi cabs less expensive on the whole and also much more available and usable than it is in the states um, in contrast driving a car is more expensive both for gas and to actually purchase a car uh, on top of that um, you'll see that a dollar 42 figure for San Diego gasoline keep in mind that's per liter not per gallon so um, it is, uh, <laughs> if you thought that that was old info, you know, 10 year old info, that's, uh, it's not. That's why you see that $1.42 rather than five, whatever it is. All right, going on to the next section, which is utilities. Um, you can see once again, Grenoble is about 50% uh, cheaper on, uh, sort of across the board on um, basic, you know, electricity, heating, cooling, garbage, uh, on uh, <clears throat> mobile cell, uh, mobile uh, cell phone costs, and also on internet. Now, the section just below that, sports and leisure, I find this uh, to be a really interesting um, one because, uh, again, Grenoble, France, <clears throat> cheaper than San Diego across the board, um, and, uh, there's a couple things there. I just my, caught my eye movie theaters. Uh, we've actually found it to be even cheaper than that, than the 1285 you're seeing there or 12 euros. Um, we, we've seen first run movies at eight euros and it's not even a matinee fitness club. Uh, ask my son about that. <laughs> well, actually I paid for it. So I guess I'm the right person to ask for it, but, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, cheaper there. Um, tennis. Uh, now, uh, something that's really interesting, I think, is the, um, for example, skiing. Skiing here is literally, uh, the ski tickets alone are literally one fifth the price that they are in the U.S. for, or, or even less than that. I mean, uh, top ski areas now 
in San, in the U.S. or literally, uh, well, o well over two hundred dollars, and here they're still under forty dollars. So it's a huge difference. And then um, buying food at the Mid Mountain restaurants and so forth, even that's significantly less expensive. And also, uh, sports programs for kids tends to run a lot less here. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. All right next, we have child care and including uh, basically really it's schooling. And you can see, once again, Grenoble beats uh, San Diego by about 50%. Um, and then uh, the next line down there is international primary school. Um, again, our kids are in secondary school, so it's a little bit different. Um, they show a tuition price of $7,500 there for the international primary school. I know which school they're talking about because my one of my sons went there. It was quite a bit less expensive only three years ago. It was... Uh, 4,000 I believe or it just increased to 5,000 and it's called the American School of Grenoble and it's um, designed for uh, Americans that are working in France and uh, intend and that for when their children intend to move back to the US and and have their children go to US universities um, but one of the things that you'll find in France, oh, a couple of things you find in France. One is um, public international schools that are very highly regarded, very sought after by French children. Um, but uh, uh, foreign kids, at least American kids, tend to have an advantage getting into those schools um, because they've already got their English as a first language. And uh, in those, their public schools, they're great. Um, they are more highly regarded than than, uh, than some of the best schools in France. So you have that. Also, you have what they call private schools here, which are essentially, um, well, they're like charter schools. They're still subsidized by the government, but they do have a tuition. But the tuition is much, much less expensive than uh, tuition in the U.S. So typically it's about $1,500 per year. So our oldest boy right now goes to that kind of a private school. It looks very much like a, you know, U.S. Catholic private school. Um, um, beautiful campus, beautiful setting, and it's only 1,500 euros per year. Uh, next item, clothing. Uh, this has got a couple interesting items in it. Uh, first item is uh, one pair of Levi jeans, 501 or similar. Uh, it says it's 39% uh, more expensive in Grenoble. I would say the price difference is even greater than that. Now, I need to qualify. <laughs> Back in the States, I was a Costco dad. Every week, I could be found in Costco shopping for uh, the family. And uh, so, so when I bought Levi's, it was typically at Costco, and they were less than $61. Here I went, dropped into the Levi's boutique store, and uh, they were more than 85 euros or $85. Um, the other items, it shows uh, Grenoble being less expensive. I, we've sort of had the feeling that for name brand clothing items, uh, that Grenoble's been more expensive. It, it hasn't been a very scientific study on our part and we missed the US inflation. We did experience of course the French inflation um, but it uh, this seems to indicate that uh, Grenoble's clothing uh, is less expensive even for a pair of Nike running shoes. Now Grenoble has a uh, or France has a uh, I think all of Europe in fact has a um, a discount uh, sort of sporting goods and camping and outdoor goods store uh, called Decathlon and they have a lot of casual sort of sports oriented clothing socks a lot of things that uh, kids need and they are uh, very inexpensive very well priced and I, the same goes for their sporting goods it's not typically not name brand stuff it comes under the Decathlon 
and their various sub brands, but it's you know decent quality and uh, um, great prices. So it's kind of like having a discount REI and uh, and with a lot of clothing options in there. So you do have that that benefit. All right, next one is real estate. Starting with rent, you can see Numbio has uh, Grenoble rent about 75% across the board, less expensive than San Diego rent. Um, this goes a long way to explaining why there's so many homeless people in San Diego and in Southern California. Um, and you see both that that applies both in the city center and outside of the city center and then skipping down to buying apartments it doesn't have a single family residence here uh, doing it by apartment again about the same same amount less expensive in Grenoble now I'm going to take issue with this one because this says uh, that it was 70% less expensive in Grenoble. Um, I'd say it's far more, far less expensive than that. We, we, uh, we purchased a three bedroom, you know, living room, two bath, dining room, kitchen, four balcony apartment for uh, 230,000 euro in the city center. Uh, what would be considered the city center in San Diego anyway. It's just outside the center center part of it, but it is, you know, walking distance of the core of the city. It's it's really city center. And uh, we couldn't have come close to buying something like that um, for less than, uh, oh, a million, maybe two million in downtown San Diego. So... Yeah, that one, uh, that, that number seems off to me. I don't know where they got that from. And here you get to the salary comparisons. Of course, uh, using averages leaves a lot to, to be desired. Um, that doesn't uh, help anyone on the lower end of the pay scale. So, um, especially when you have... Uh, billionaires floating around <laughs> in town it's really hard to tell how accurate this is but um yeah so grenoble salaries are quite a bit lower than uh, french salaries um as an expat uh, that may or may not affect you the for us i moved over here during covid and uh, was working remotely uh, for, for the home office in San Diego um, and am now retired. So uh, the salary I made was still the U.S. salary. The bottom of the page gives you a comparison of other international cities relative to the two in our comparison. So you'll see on the left you have Grenoble and San Diego and then how that compares first of all to certain other French cities. Um, looks like Grenoble is pretty com comparable to those cities and then of course you know you know New York is uh, much more expensive and it shows Prague Sydney London and Berlin relative to them um, moving uh, to the bottom half of that you'll see uh, that Numbio does you there's a bunch of comparisons you can do including you know healthcare pollution uh, one that focus in, focuses in exclusively on property prices, traffic, quality of life. So um, I didn't just, as indicated in the title, I didn't want to make this just about San Diego versus Grenoble, but really more an indication of the U.S. versus France. And so I've got a couple other comparisons here. This one compares San Diego to Paris. Paris, of course, is where a lot of Americans think of when they think of France. And uh, Paris is often considered a very expensive city. You'll see a lot of vlogs out there of people renting the tiniest little apartments uh, because of the cost of rent. But if you look at this uh, overview page, you see that um, Paris overall is, again, less expensive 
uh, than San Diego, and that uh, that's across all categories. But also, like San Diego versus Grenoble, the salaries or purchasing power, if you're uh, tied into a local salary, on average, will be lower in Paris. Uh, as you can see, um, even for, uh, I'm skipping the other category since there's not going to be as much price variation on things like clothing and food, but going to the real property prices, you can see across the board, uh, Paris is less expensive, surprisingly, than San Diego, even in the city center, um, except for the one category of purchasing in this, you know, the city center. And um, I've got my doubts about that because as noted with the Grenoble comparison, uh, the San Diego downtown pri prices, which I was fairly familiar with, we owned a small studio downtown and I worked downtown and was involved in downtown San Diego issues. Um, my experience was that their price, the pricing in downtown San Diego is quite a bit higher uh, than estimated here in Numbio, especially when you look here and you compare uh, the price that they have per square meter for apartment in city center versus outside of the city center. Um, my experience was the variation was much higher than that. But anyway, I'm kind of getting into the weeds here. All right, now to expand out of San Diego, uh, because we, San Diego is not necessarily a fair comparison for a lot of people because it's a very expensive U.S. city. I picked Nashville, Tennessee to compare against Grenoble. I uh, picked it randomly, but I did look up afterwards and saw that Nashville ranked somewhere around 17 to 20 uh, among cities in the U.S. for cost of living expense. As you can see, Again, Grenoble is cheaper in all categories than Nashville, except in local purchasing power. Again, that means higher salaries in Nashville than in Grenoble. All right, this is running a lot longer than I expected, so I'll try to speed through these uh, restaurant prices. Again, across the board, cheaper in France than in Nashville. Grenoble is less expensive than Nashville on grocery items, generally speaking. Transportation follows the same pattern as a previous comparison with public transit being less expensive, uh, less expensive and expansive. <laughs> well, less expensive in Grenoble and less expansive uh, and more expansive in Grenoble. Uh, driving your own car, on the other hand, is going to be cheaper in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee with the proviso of course that uh, you'll need your car in Nashville more than you will need it in Grenoble. Utilities and sports and leisure are both less expensive in Grenoble, France than they are in Nashville, Tennessee. My previous discussion about preschool, primary, and secondary school education being less expensive in France holds true here. Uh, as well as the discussion about clothing and shoes. And again, uh, just as a reminder, reminder, the education expenses were are less expensive in France, and there's kind of a break-even with clothing and shoes. As for housing, uh, it's hugely less expensive to rent in Grenoble than it is in Nashville, and that holds true for both in the city and outside, whereas for purchase, it's a, a bit closer, uh, a little bit less expensive to buy city center in Grenoble and a bit more expensive in it, the areas out surrounding Grenoble. Again, salaries and financing, same story as before. Uh, salary, average salaries are uh, much higher in Nashville than they are in Grenoble. Although, as mentioned before, I don't think that tells the whole story. The minimum wage in France, the national minimum wage, wage is 11 euros and 50. So 11 and a half euros where 
in the U.S., the, the national minimum wage is seven twenty-five, but of course, in certain cities, it's higher. So, um, but my sense is that the bottom rung jobs in the U.S. pay less than the bottom rung jobs in France, uh, based on that minimum wage. And uh, one thing I didn't mention before, which is shown here, is the mortgage interest rates. Uh, now, 30-year fixed is not as common in France. It's uh, more typically 20-year fixed. But you'll see that the interest rate on a French mortgage is less than half of what it is in the U.S. typically. And that, that's consistent with our experience since we took out a loan for our, our home here. And... Uh, but the thing that this doesn't show, of course, is that uh, in France, you don't get a mortgage interest deduction the way you do in, in the U.S. Now, I don't know at the end of the day uh, whether the uh, higher interest rate uh, totally offsets or even more than offsets, um, or I should say less than offsets. Okay, I'm confusing myself, but I'm not sure what the math is on that, <laughs> so that with the mortgage interest deduction whether you're you're better off in the US despite that higher interest rate or um, the lower interest rate uh, is a net benefit to you. A couple of words about Numbio. Uh, I, I've read criticism of Numbio as um, relying on user data. Uh, I have also researched that and, and Numbio itself says they don't rely solely on user data. It's kind of like an open source uh, or maybe more crowdsourcing type of resource um, like Wikipedia. So, you know, people people input the data into Numbio and Numbio is constantly um, recruiting data. Uh, but Numbio says it also relies on uh, other sources of information. And I, I found it to be relatively, relatively accurate. I'm sure there are exceptions to that, and I've even found a couple of things that I thought were uh, a little questionable, but, but overall I found it to be accurate. So my final thoughts are that, you know, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, we didn't move to France purely for uh, cost. Uh, in fact, I uh, would have considered someplace even more expensive uh, based on quality of life, but uh, France seemed to offer a lot of things that we were looking for. And we have two uh, teenagers who uh, we wanted to, you know, blow up their minds as we talk about, but really benefit their, their, their intellectual development by learning a new language, a new culture. But as mentioned, we have been very pleasantly surprised by the our, uh, overall reduction in cost of living and uh, some of that has to do not just with the cost of things in France, but our lifestyle since we've moved here, which is simpler, less car-based, less materialistic overall, more, uh, more friends and family, more, um, you know, more uh, recreational, I'd say, and uh, the, the things that we feel make a life enjoyable. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it took so long. I didn't expect it to be such a long video. And uh, if, you, uh, if you made it all the way to the end here, I'm impressed. Thank you. And grateful.